You don't really know much about Halloween. Welcome back to another unboxing video. Uh, on this one, we are going to go through the subscriber stuff from the Vinegar Syndrome uh, subscription that I have that I just subscribed to this year for the first time. And how many times can I say the word subscription in a single sentence? Uh, if you are not familiar with the Newly Deads, I'm Joel. Uh, my wife and I make spooky themed content, which uh, you can check out thenewlydeads.com to find out about our blog that we write. Each of us write our own individual blogs. We have a TV show. Uh, we do events because we uh, make art where you can come and check out what we have to sell. We also do a podcast and um, lots of videos, which you'll find on this channel, which please feel free to like and subscribe. And uh, if you'd like to reach out to us for any reason, you can do so at contact at thenewlydeads.com. Um, and also our Facebook page, just look up The Newly Deads. You can come check out. Uh, that's where we update whenever there's new episodes that are coming out, uh, new videos that are released blog posts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we do a lot of stuff there, so you can always find us on the webpage. But um, like I said, I subscribed to Vinegar Syndrome for the first time this year, and this is the subscriber box for this month, and I'm kind of excited about it. So we will start with the thing that has got my interest the most piqued because I have Volume 1, but not Volume 2. Uh, this is the Homegrown Horrors of Volume 3. I love uh, regional filmmaking. And these sets are really nice. Uh, on this set, we've got Revenge from 1986, Haunted Ween, which is the one that I'm most excited about from 1991, and Deadly Love from 1987. Um, so uh, Revenge is directed by Christopher Lewis, who did Blood Cult and The Ripper, which The Ripper was uh, just got a release um, this month as well on Vinegar Syndrome. That's the um, shot on video Jack the Ripper story with Tom Savini in the uh, lead. Uh, that also, uh, the film Revenge stars uh, Jim, John Carradine, excuse me, not Jim, uh, who is in Jacko, uh, The Astro Zombies, and Night Strangler. Huge career. Uh, done a lot of genre filmmaking. Uh, that one is about a cult of devil worshippers uh, who prey on students for human sacrifices. Good business model. Um, and that one is the sequel to the 1985 direct to video movie Blood Cult. Uh, which was also written and directed by Christopher Lewis, which Blood Cult, um, I don't know if I've actually seen that one. I should have checked before I started this. Um, now, Haunted Ween is directed <clears throat> to me by Doug Robertson. Uh, that's the only film that he did. Uh, it stars Brian Blakely, who was in The X-Files, uh, one episode of that and a bunch of other TV stuff. Uh, that one is about a local fraternity giving permission to, who is given permission to use an old house for a fundraiser. Uh, while the students repair the house, they soon are hunted down and placed in the haunted house for amusement. Um, that one just sounds like a lot of fun, and from what I've heard from other reviewers, that uh, <clears throat> it's just that, a lot of fun. That one uh, was filmed on, or I'm sorry, in and around Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, many of the actors were students at Western Kentucky University at the time, which uh, I used to go to college with a guy from Bowling Green who used to tell me that uh, it was a beautiful country and some of the most beautiful women on the planet. I don't know if it's true. I've never been there. And uh, finally, Deadly Love is directed by Michael O'Rourke, who did Moonstalker, which was in the last Homegrown Horror set. Uh, that stars Jim Alvis, who that was his only film. Uh, you know, it's the joy of regional filmmaking is you get one film and you're done because then you go on to work at a car dealership or something. Uh, the plot of this one is kind of lengthy here. Um, that's what she said. Two lovesick teenagers named Buddy and Anne decide to elope, but Buddy is murdered. Twenty years later, Anne uses black magic to summon long-dead Buddy to her bedroom every night until local teenagers drive her to suicide. Jeez, that's dark. When Anne's niece inherits the home, she's plagued by violent teenagers, a homicidal maniac, and a walking dead man. All the nightmares that come with the house. Okay. Uh, so that, uh, I couldn't find anything out about that one. So, again, the fun of regional filmmaking... Uh, you know, there's not a lot of information because it's local. Uh, so these are not in the order that 
they appear. This is Haunted Ween. This is like the one that I'm most excited to watch. Oh, there's the back. Typical vinegar syndrome packaging. <clears throat> On the inside, we've got the uh, the alternate art there, which I don't ever uh, switch out the the, uh, the artwork. I don't know why. Just it's not a thing for me. Then we've got Revenge, which Again, typical vinegar syndrome packaging on the back. On the inside, we have the alternate artwork there. And I don't typically do this. I usually uh, just show the films while they're still packaged, but this time I, it took me a while to get to them. I, I wanted to try doing it this way this time. And I also was just kind of curious what was inside. Um, in this one, we have the alternate, which again, you know, it's low budget regional filmmaking. You get this, you get low budget regional covers and uh, packaging. So these are just a lot of fun. Um, I really enjoyed the first one, and uh, I don't know, I just I haven't found a good deal on the second one, and I wasn't a subscriber before. So I'm super excited that I have that now, and now it's going to give me another reason to track down part two. Uh, so the next one, next movie was Invasion USA. This is in 4K. Uh, it's from 1985. Obviously, Chuck Norris, if you can't tell. Uh, this was directed by Joseph Zito, who did Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter, and the very underrated Prowler, which has gotten a lot of love over the past several years. Um, but if you've never seen the Prowler and you like slasher movies, you're missing out, son. Um, like I said, this stars Chuck Norris, who did The Way of the Dragon, and a ton of other 80s action films. He's kind of the quintessential 80s action guy. Um, the plot of this film is that a one-man army comes to the rescue when the United States is invaded by communists, which back in the 80s, that was a concern. Uh, now, until 2007, this was MGM's second highest selling home video title behind Gone with the Wind. Wrap your head around that, kids. Um, now, I love a good... Uh, film where there is, you know, in, in some sort of an insurrection and it's kind of one man versus a, a bunch of, you know, bad guys. We've got the, the Blu-ray and the 4K. Then we've got the standard Chuck Norris double submachine gun action and it's like a poster on the back. Incidentally, one of the most, uh, the recent, one of my favorite recent insurrection films is, uh, oh no, Bushwick. I've never seen Bushwick with Dave Bautista. It's good. Um, so then we've got, you know, this nice book. It's got a lot of information about the film. This is kind of a classic, you know, in terms of like 80s action cinema. Um, you know, right around the same time as Chuck Norris was doing the Missing in Action series. And, uh, you know, he was at the height of his powers. Uh, still is to some extent, you know, still doing the uh, Expendables films. And I've honestly, I don't think I've ever seen this. So I'm kind of excited to check it out because I am a sucker for a cheesy action movie. And Chuck Norris is not always the cheesiest guy, but uh can't say no. So that one is exciting. Not something I necessarily would have bought on my own, especially not a 4K version. Now, if there was like a lower budget, uh, you know, single disc one, maybe. The next one we've got is China O'Brien, which if you were a 90s kid and you liked action movies, you knew exactly who Cynthia Rothrock was. Uh, this is volume one, or I'm sorry, uh, part one and part two. This is also in 4K, I believe. I'm trying to remember. I should have checked beforehand. Yes. Um, so this is from 1990 and 1990, both. Uh, both were directed by Robert Klaus who did uh, Game of Death and Enter the Dragon, which if you are a Bruce Lee fan, you know those films quite well. Uh, Cynthia Rothrock, who is in both, um, was in Yes, Madam, uh, Lady Reporter, Writing Wrongs. These are all movies that uh, Vinegar Syndrome has recently released. Um, was Yes, Madam one of theirs? No, I'm trying to remember. I have it on the shelf, but I forgot. It was part of the a set. Um, but I know that uh, Writing Wrongs and Lady Reporter were for sure. So the plot of the first one is a policewoman, uh, expert and instructor in martial arts, leaves the city to stay with her dad, a sheriff in a small town with peace and quiet, or so she thinks. She gets plenty of opportunities to show her martial arts skills. That seems like a very vague plot. Uh, in part two, this time China O'Brien has trouble with a dealer who puts a prize on her head because she had uh, spoiled an important drug deal of his 
but all the world's criminals will not be enough to catch up with China, one of the masters of the martial arts. Uh, in the first film, it's the only film in, with, uh, in which Cynthia Rothrock broke a bone while filming, which was her finger. And in the second one, some of the action scenes were filmed following the initial shoot to ensure that the movie would be long enough. Uh, these scenes included the fight between Keith Cook and Billy Blanks, the latter of which was cast uh, at short notice for specifically this scene, which I was just looking at a Vinegar Syndrome group today, and somebody pointed out that uh, Billy Blanks was in that, and they were joking that uh, Vinegar Syndrome is going to have to start releasing the Time Bow videos, because they they got to be running out of content here soon, because they've been releasing a lot of his, which I have some of them on the shelf. Um, really nice artwork there. Um, I never quite understood the box and then the slipcase. If it's only one movie, if it's two movies, okay, maybe you can get away with it. Um, but if it's just one, you know, which isn't the case here, then it doesn't make sense. You've got uh, the multiple discs here for the films as well as the special features. You've got a total of four discs there all together. And these inside the slipcase slipcovers are super thick and really nice. Uh, then you've got this book, which for some reason, I'm not sure why, I'm sure there's a logic there. They decided to go with this kind of low, low fi, uh, low grade images, almost like it's like a, like it was made in the eighties or there's, uh, there, uh, I don't know what, what the word is I'm looking for. Like it's almost newsprint, but it smells like a delightful, delightfully packaged vinegar syndrome book. If you know what I mean? And I think you do. If you're watching this video, you are well aware of what I'm referring to, probably. Um, all right. And finally, the thing I think I'm most excited about, um, Nick Millard is kind of a low-budget genius. And uh, they apparently have got access to his collection because we're kicking it off with what used to be called Big Fat Crazy Ethel, uh, but is also called Criminally Insane. And this is also double-teamed uh, with Satan's Black Wedding. Uh, Criminally Insane is from 1975. Satan's Black Wedding is from 1976. Like I said, both directed by Nick Millard, who did Death Nurse 1 and 2 and Dracula in Vegas, which uh, Death Nurse is probably Nick's most famous film other than this one. Um, it stars Priscilla, Priscilla Alden, who was in Death Nurse 1 and 2 and 9 Months. Uh, it also stars Craig Braddock, uh, who this was his only film. Or, I'm sorry, this was his only film. Pardon me. Uh, the plot of Criminally insane is that an obese woman recently released from an insane asylum kills anyone who attempts to get her to stop eating. Um, and for Satan's Black Wedding, a man travels to another city for a sister's funeral to try and find out why she killed herself, and he discovers that she is actually a vampire and returns from the dead to take revenge on her family. Um, for this, filming took five weeks in the spring of 1973. And for this, the crypt set was constructed in Millard's garage by a friend uh, who did the stonework, and the set can be seen in the Death Nurse films. A cardboard coffin was also purchased for the film, which, do you know anything about Nick Millard? Uh, a lot of his stuff is very esoteric, and there is a lot of red paint that is used, almost like uh, if you've ever seen uh, Dawn of the Dead 1978, you kind of get the idea of what we're what you're dealing with in terms of the blood content. <clears throat> so you've got um, nice little alternate images there for the films. And like I said, I have a feeling that they're going to be releasing a lot more Nick Millard films, especially if these are, are done well. But um, this is like the best version that's come out so far. And uh, this one was, as far as I know, not really... Uh, if it was a lost film or it was a there was something more to it that made it you know kind of unique and a fun little addition to the set so that is it for the subscriber box it was a big month for vinegar syndrome and uh so if you uh would like to check out any of the videos please do so there'll be uh more information stuff that's popping up in the screen and you can just scroll down and take a look and see what else is there otherwise that does it for this episode and uh Remember that life is not guaranteed, so don't forget to unbox your heart. See you next time.
Happy Halloween.